Pablo Escobar, the infamous drug lord, was once just a poor boy from the streets of Rio Negro, Colombia. Born in the year 1949, Escobar was the third of seven children in a modest family. His parents, Abel de Jesus Dari Escobar, a farmer, and Hermilda Gaviria, a schoolteacher, struggled to make ends meet. Despite the hardships, young Pablo was not one to be deterred by his circumstances. His ambition was a flame that refused to be extinguished. From an early age, he held a grand vision for his future. He famously told his mother that he wanted to be a millionaire by the age of 22. To many, this might have seemed like the fanciful dreams of a child. But for Escobar, it was a prophecy he was determined to fulfill. The road to riches however was not paved with gold for young Escobar. Instead, it was a tumultuous path marked by illicit activities. His first foray into the underworld began with selling contraband cigarettes, a seemingly harmless venture that opened the door to a world of crime. But Escobar was not satisfied with the meager profits, and soon found himself immersed in grander schemes. He ventured into car theft, leading a gang of petty thieves who prowled the streets of Rio Negro, their eyes set on unattended vehicles. These early criminal endeavors were just the tip of the iceberg. They were Escobar's first lessons in the school of crime, where he learned the art of evasion, the importance of loyalty, and the power of fear. They were the stepping stones that led him from the streets of Rio Negro to the helm of a criminal empire. Young Escobar, driven by ambition, was steadily laying the foundation for his future empire. Escobar's journey from poverty to power was as ruthless as it was rapid. In the early 1970s, Pablo Escobar began to dip his toes into the world of drug trafficking. It was a world far removed from his impoverished beginnings, and one that promised him the wealth and power he craved. Initially his operations were small-scale, smuggling modest quantities of cocaine. But even then, Escobar was a man with a vision. He saw potential where others saw risk, and he was prepared to do whatever it took to realize that potential. In 1976, Escobar made a move that would change the course of his life, and indeed, the history of Colombia. He founded the Medellin Cartel, an organization that would come to dominate the global drug trade. It was a sophisticated operation, and Escobar was at its helm, steering it with a ruthless determination. But his rise to power was not without opposition. To protect his operations, Escobar resorted to violence and bribery, creating a climate of fear and corruption that permeated every level of society. He was as feared as he was revered, a man who could make or break lives with a single command. As the 1970s gave way to the 80s, Escobar began to expand his network beyond Colombia's borders. The United States, with its insatiable appetite for cocaine, became a lucrative market for the Medellin cartel. This expansion led to an exponential increase in Escobar's wealth and power. By the time the dust had settled, Escobar had transformed himself from a small-time criminal into the king of cocaine. His wealth was staggering, his power absolute. And yet beneath the surface the seeds of his downfall were already being sown. By the 1980s Escobar had transformed from a small-time criminal into the most powerful drug lord in the world. His rise was as meteoric as it was merciless. But as history would soon reveal, even the mightiest empires can crumble. At the height of his power, Escobar's wealth was so vast that he was spending $2,500 a month just on rubber bands to hold his money. It's a staggering fact that paints a vivid picture of the astronomical wealth Pablo Escobar amassed at the peak of his reign as the king of cocaine. In 1987, Forbes magazine included him in their annual list of billionaires, a public recognition of the illicit fortune he had amassed. His wealth was not merely an abstract concept, it was tangible, visible in his extravagant lifestyle that was the stuff of legends. A quintessential example was his sprawling estate, Hacienda Napolos. Covering over 7,000 acres, it was a testament to Escobar's indulgences, complete with a private zoo that housed exotic animals from around the world. It was a playground for the rich and infamous, a symbol of Escobar's untouchable status. But Escobar's wealth was not just about personal extravagance, it was also a tool of influence. He embarked on public housing projects constructing homes for the impoverished and destitute. These ventures painted him as a benefactor, a man of the people, despite the dark underbelly of his operations. For a brief period, Escobar even dabbled in politics, securing a seat as an alternate member of the Colombian Congress in 1982. His political stint, however brief, was a manifestation of his desire to be more than just a kingpin, 
He sought legitimacy, respectability, and above all power. But the world of politics proved to be less accommodating to Escobar's ambitions. His criminal activities were exposed leading to his expulsion from Congress. It was a public humiliation, a blow to his carefully cultivated image. Despite his criminal activities Escobar was seen by many as a Robin Hood figure using his wealth to help the poor. Yet his philanthropy, fueled by his ill-gotten wealth, created a complex legacy, painting him as both a villain and a hero in the public imagination. Escobar's reign however was not to last. The walls were closing in on the man who once seemed untouchable. The Colombian government no longer willing to turn a blind eye began to crack down on his operations. At the same time rival cartels, eager to seize control of the lucrative drug trade, were increasing their attacks on Escobar's empire. In the early 90s Escobar's situation became increasingly precarious. His wealth and influence could not protect him from the mounting pressure. In a desperate bid for safety he brokered a deal with the government. In exchange for a reduced sentence and protection from extradition, Escobar agreed to serve time in his own luxurious private prison, La Cathedral. This was no ordinary prison, it was more akin to a palace, complete with all the luxuries one could imagine. But even within these gilded walls, Escobar was not safe. His enemies were closing in, and in 1992 sensing a trap, he made a daring escape. Now a fugitive, Escobar was on the run. His empire was crumbling, his allies were turning on him, and his enemies were closing in. But Escobar was not one to go down without a fight. He evaded capture for over a year, moving from hideout to hideout always one step ahead of his pursuers. But in December 1993, his luck finally ran out. Cornered on a rooftop in his hometown of Medellin, Escobar was killed in a shootout with the Colombian National Police. The king of cocaine, as he was often referred to, met a violent end, a stark contrast to the luxurious life he had once led. Escobar's death marked the end of an era, but his legacy as one of the most notorious criminals in history lives on. His story serves as a stark reminder of the destructive power of greed and the inevitable downfall that comes with a life of crime. More than two decades after his death the shadow of Pablo Escobar still looms large. An enigma in his life his legacy continues to be a topic of enduring fascination. A man of many roles, a father, a husband, a benefactor to the poor, and yet one of history's most notorious drug lords. His life, rich in its contradictions and paradoxes, has been the inspiration behind countless books, movies, and TV shows. These narratives often present a polarized view of Escobar, oscillating between the extremes of a cold-blooded criminal and a Robin Hood-esque figure. Each portrayal, in its own way, attempts to decode the complex web of Escobar's persona, his motivations, his ambitions, and his fears. But beyond the media portrayal, the real impact of Escobar's actions continues to reverberate through Colombia. The country still grapples with the aftermath of his reign, marked by a devastating drug war and a wave of violence that swept across its cities and villages. The drug trafficking networks he helped establish persist today, fueling crime and corruption, and posing a significant challenge to law enforcement agencies. And yet there is a certain resilience that Colombia displays. A testament to the nation's indomitable spirit, it continues to rise from the ashes of its troubled past, setting an example for nations worldwide dealing with similar issues. Escobar's legacy also offers a cautionary tale about the misuse of power and wealth. It underscores the grave consequences of ambition when it is not tempered by morality and respect for human life. His life, while marked by undeniable success and influence, ultimately led to a trail of destruction and despair. It's a story that compels us to reflect on the true nature of power, the allure of wealth, and the importance of ethical conduct. A story that, despite its stark darkness, holds within it important lessons for all of us. Pablo Escobar's life serves as a stark reminder of the destructive power of ambition unchecked by morality.